Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Welcome back to Miami Dice. Today we're taking a look at an older game called Power Grid. Um, Power Grid was originally um, produced as a crayon drawing game. Funkenschlager. Yes. Well, actually, I never played the original one, but I know there was a lot of numbers you involved. Crayon drawing. That's enough for. Okay. <laughs> now, when Power Grid came out, um, it was very popular, went mm -hmm. to the top rankings on Board Game Geek, and has stayed there for quite a long time. Yep. In fact, for several years, they would come out with a new map for it every year, and people would buy that map eagerly. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think just now we're starting to see it kind of fade a little bit from the popularity. I mean, there's still people who like it and play it, but yeah. we don't talk about it as much. But it is a classic game, and it's one I have in my collection, and it is one of the few... Heavy Euro games that Z likes. This is true. And hmm. it's a heavy Euro game, and you uh, like it. Yeah. All right, so we're already giving away our opinions on it, but let's, let's take a look at how it plays, if you've never seen it before, and we'll be back. Okay, the first thing I need to say is that I replaced most of the pieces in Power Grid. Uh, the paper money, which I hate. The game came with paper money, so I had cards printed out at uh, ArtsCal. Uh, that so I use card money instead of that for the houses I replaced the houses with pieces from Litco that look like this and then I also replaced the resources so here's a pile of coal and here's a barrel of oil and here is a trash can and here's a nuclear waste now the old components were fine actually there wasn't anything wrong with them I just liked these and thought that they would be cool addition to the game now you can play on multiple maps. Two come in the original Power Grid box, Germany and the USA. So this is a map of the German side. Now, you're going to play on a certain number of areas based on a number of players. So if you play with three players, you'll play with three areas, etc. So you decide which areas to use. Obviously, they have to be connected to each other. The game is going to take place over multiple rounds, and those rounds what you're trying to do is you're trying to power a certain number of cities. Up at the top, it shows the number of cities that you can power, the cities that you've built in. Uh, but you also have to have power plants that can power that many cities. Now most games go to 16, and as soon as someone builds 16 cities, the game's going to end, but you want to be able to power up to 16 cities. And to do that, you're going to need power plants. The first part of every turn is going to be an auction where players are going to be auctioning off for power plants. But you have the active market, which is up here. You can't buy from the bottom row, but it's showing you which cards are coming. So each of these power plants will power a number of cities. Players can only have three power plants, so you want to be efficient. See, this takes two oil to power one city, two coal to power a city, two oil or two coal or one of each to power a city, a garbage, three, coal, three oil powers two cities, three coal, two cities, and oil for one city and two coal for two cities. Players will do an auction. Once a player wins the auction, it goes around a table. Then you draw the next power plant. In this case, it happens to be a 13. This one is wind energy. You don't need anything, and it powers one city. And then you rearrange everything for in numbers. Now, the, when you first start, you're going to have three through 10 power plants out there. And this 13 is always the next one drawn. But after that, you never know what might be drawn. Here's a 33, powers four for free. But it's going to be a while before that one comes up there. So, and it's also going to be somewhat expensive. When you're auctioning, you have to pay the minimum bid is the number on the card. Also, at the end of each round, the highest priced power plant is removed from the, the round and one is, comes in its place, which, again, could be a higher priced one. But if a very expensive one comes out, it will take a bit before it comes out in the game later on. It, it balances very well. And as you can see, the power plants get much better. One oil for five, that powers five cities. Now, this all takes place, and there's one thing that's incredibly important about this game, and that's turn order. In this game, players will be put in turn order based on how many cities they control, which is over here. Every time you add more, you know, build into more cities, you will move it up here, and the highest person goes first in the auctioning phase, 
If there's a tie, whoever has the best power plant will win the tie. Now this is important for auctioning phases, but it's even more important for the next two phases. When you buy resources and build cities, those are done in reverse player order. So white will get to buy resources first, and that matters because of this really unique market that's on the board down here. Now you can see that there's different resources, and each of these resources, there's not, they're not completely filled up. You'll see there's only two nuclear, and there are six garbage. Oil comes all the way across here, and coal is completely filled up. And after the end of each round, you're going to add some more to each of these paths, so the numbers will change. But the cost of each resource is in the box here. So you can see, for example, this costs one, everything in this box. So if I go first, I can buy three coal for one and maybe one more coal for two. That, that costs me um, five total. The next person, if they want to buy four coal, they're going to have to pay two each and then three each for these, which makes it four plus six, ten for them. And you can see that it's going to get more expensive as time goes by. And it's possible even to buy enough stuff so that people can't b buy anything. Now, when you buy these, you have to put them on a plant you control. Let's say I own power plant five in front of me. I can store up to four things on it because it takes two to power one city. So I can store double that amount on there. I can't store more. And I can switch them back and forth. And when I get a third power plant, I can replace a fourth power plant. I can replace any of the three that I already have. After people are done buying resources, they will then build in cities. And this is where the board comes into play. And this game takes place in what's called three steps. Step one lets players build only one player per city. And the first player in the city builds in this 10 section and it costs 10 to build a city in that section. When you want to go to another city, let's say I want to go up here, I'm going to have to pay the connection cost, which is 16, and another 10. And so you can see you're trying to find the best spots on the board over here, probably by Essen. You can see that the costs are much cheaper. In fact, it's free to go between these two cities. So if I build a 10 here, it would only cost me 10 to go to this next city. And then down here it would cost me 12. Now, if I want to move through a city, let's say there's already somebody in that city. That's fine. I can do that. I just pay 2, 9, 11, and then add the 10 here, it would be cost 21 to go down to that city down there. Once step 2 happens, players can build in a city where someone else is by paying 15, and step 3 they can pay 20 to go into those cities. At the end of a turn then, players will pay resources off their power plants to power as many of their cities as they wish to, and they're going to receive money, according to this card here. You can see if you power 7 cities, you're going to get 82 euros. If you power four cities, you get 54 euros. And so it goes up, but it decreases in the amount it goes up as you get power more and more cities. There's also some other upkeeping that happens between rounds. Uh, when one person builds seven cities, uh, then we go into phase two. And when the phase three card is drawn, which is in the power deck, then the market shrinks and there's only six power plants, but you can buy any of those six and also higher power plants will probably be in play at that point in time. When one person reaches 16 uh, cities that they build on the board, at the end of that turn whoever can power the most cities is the winner and money is a tiebreaker and that happens quite often in this game so it's good to have money. Okay, um, so I'm going to start with Z because I'm curious. Uh -huh. You're normally not in favor of big, long, heavy games. Right. So what is it that allows you to play this for sometimes two and a half, three hours. Mm -hmm. I, I think what I like about it is the fact that everything in the game makes thematic sense. What really bothers me about a lot of games that are longer and in the Euro realm is that what you are engaging in in the game has very little thematic sense to, or very little ties to what you're feeling. Um, I like this game because what I'm engaging in makes sense. All the parts, all the moving parts in the game are logical. And it flows well, one thing into the other. You buy the plants, you fuel them up, you build the, you know, I don't know, houses or whatever you want to call them. And you fire them up, you make money, do it again. Those parts flow well into each other. I think that's why I like it so much. 
All right. Well, what do you think? Because you're not usually a big fan of mathy games. I, I'm not a big fan of mathy games, and that's probably the one aspect of the game that I really don't enjoy. Um, and it is pretty mathy, so why would I like the game anyway? Um, and again, I, I, I like it from the aspect of you're building this uh, almost like an industrial, uh, you know, power producing grid. empire. Like and a power grid. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're building your own power grid. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just to help you Go ahead, Captain smack him. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, but I. So you can see what you're doing. Yeah. You see it grow. Yes. Uh, and again, I think a lot of the Euro, you don't really see that. You, you're you're pushing this cube over here. You're 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 pushing this little thing over here, and you're getting you're turning in these cubes to get these things. And uh, I I just I I just don't like the I don't know the abstractedness of some euros. Where and I think we're both saying the same thing yeah. in different words. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 it you makes can... sense. This one has a good theme. Yeah. Yes, it's long. Yes, it's mathy. It's all get out. But everything you're doing in the game makes sense. It all ties to what you're doing in the game. It's not push two random white cubes to get a red one. Yeah. yeah while yeah. you were saying that, that though, I, I don't mean to, to jump back, but while you were saying that, there are other games that I know you don't like that are long. Mm -hmm. And the things that you do in the game do make sense, and they are very thematic, but you still don't like them. So that's true. I don't like. I don't know. At that point, I would have to like compare specifically to something else. But it might be something as simple as the mechanisms don't gel with me, you know, or anything like that. Well, uh, I, I enjoyed the game um, for its experience level. I think I think the the, the mechanics, uh, you know, one of the, actually the the artwork is one of the things that that. Uh, Pulled, pulled, pulled me into it a little bit more. It's beautiful and, cover. And, and it's not beautiful, which is kind of strange. It's right. not beautiful, but it has, I don't know, just that... It has charm. It has that feel to it that yeah. uh, some of the other games just didn't have. Yeah, I, I really like it. very the... bland looking. This one yeah. has a little pop to it. Not a lot, but a little. I like the fact that it handles different numbers of players and does it well. Very few games do that. Usually yeah. when Z and I will talk or Sam will we'll talk about a game, we'll say, you know, don't play with more than four. Right. Yeah. You know, but this one goes up to six, and I've played multiple games with six players, mm -hmm. and they were a little, maybe a little longer than I wanted, but they were fine, and five is really good. Four works well. Three works well. It's just, it's neat, and they play a little bit differently, right. and there's that competition um, there, uh, but at the same time, I never, I never felt too overwhelmed by it. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that this game gets some complaints are is the fact that you're trying to be in last almost a good chunk of the game. Yeah. Well, you want to be, and then move to yeah, first. Yeah. You don't want to be last necessarily, but you don't want to be first. <laughs> okay, that's true. You don't want to be first because then you'll be last, and the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. It, it has an interesting method, and you can. This game can be a whole lot meaner than you might think. I might buy up resources just so you don't get them. Right. And I've seen it done yep. many times. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just to yeah, it's it's a it's got a good push and pull when it comes to those things. It's um you you would think looking at this game that there's not a lot of interaction. But there's a lot of interaction. Yeah, you can cut people oh, off on the yeah. board. You yeah. can buy up their resources. Well, the auctions are interaction as auction. it is. Auction. But, I mean, but you would look at it and go, oh, auctions. That's the interaction. Everything in this game. Yeah. I mean, that, that market manipulation is simple, but it's excellent. You can really mess with people, depending on where you are on that turn order. So, yeah, I think when people think of this game, one of the first things they think of is that the importance of that turn order and it is hugely important now there are some things i think the game isn't perfect uh in its in its explanation this whole step one step two step three action you know turn one yeah. phase it, it can be a little confusing for people and mm -hmm. no matter how many times i played this i'm still had like okay how does step three start again <laughs> um how many pieces are we supposed to add for yeah. number of players yeah. so I mean, th that's a minor thing. And I know one of your minor things is you, you hate the fact that part of the board is cordoned off. Yeah, depending on the number of players, you might have to section off pieces of the board. And yeah, that kind of bothers me just because and I think you don't. Ever I have a hard time visually segregating it. You don't ever play with the entire board, do you? 
Even with six you, players, you're still cut off one section, five, I think. Don't you with five play with all of it? Or? No, 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 no. I think you cut it off. Well, we'll look in the rules. Um, I, I, think, I think you cut off one part of the board. So we're actually, for the first time ever, looking in the rules as we do a review. I thought there was a one number of players I'd used it all. But anyway, yeah, that does bother me where there's a chunk of the map that you're supposed to exclude, but there's nothing to put over it. You just have to remember not to use that. And I always have a hard time seeing where that connection is severed. And so it tricks me a little bit. And that's that's my little nitpick when it comes to this game. Yeah, even uh, you're supposed to play one area per player, but with six, you only play in five areas. Okay. All right. But I think you could play in all six areas and it wouldn't kill you. Probably. It just makes the game a little less tight. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to rob you of a little... Oh, you messed up the... It's going to rob oh. you of a little um, pinch. No, I heard it's a, still messed up. Okay, I'm hearing people oh. screaming out there. I know, but they can see it on the video. <laughs> no, what you just do? I like the different maps that the game comes with. Um, yeah. Some maps are better than others. I like the Korean map had two different power right. things you could buy from. The France map has cheap nuclear energy. The Italian map is not fun because <laughs> it's thin. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just um, difficult. And then there's an extra power... Um, like an extra set extra of power, power cards. Plants. I like those. I'm not so interested in those. I mean, I know they redistributed the power a little bit. And I liked it. It, it just it changes numbers, stuff up. It's, it's a small tweak, but it's interesting. They have also that expansion, which was the robots that you could... Now that I've never played with. You know, it's like an automatic extra player or extra two players, and they sort of run themselves. It's gimmicky, but it's there if you're interested. Mm. So for me, this one does get two thumbs up. I, it's hard to explain. It's, it's certainly a heavy Euro game, but I, I, I'm, I'm involved the whole time. Mm -hmm. The auctions, I'm not a huge auction f guy, but I like them in this one. I like the idea of getting a power plant, and I feel like I'm getting stuff and powering my plants. And uh, you get less money as you get richer. The, you don't get... It's not a rich get richer type game, right. which is something I like. Right. Because it kind of moves around, and you feel like you're in it. Even if you're behind, you feel like you're still accomplishing something. Yeah. Um, like what right. you said. Like in the last game we played a, a week ago, I came in last. Mm -hmm. But I still sat there and went, I powered all my stuff. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. You know, I came in last, but I, I, I felt like I had done something. So for me, this one gets two nuclear smokestacks up. Hmm. Nice. Sam. I'm going to give this, uh, basically, because of the mathiness, I'm going to give it one and a half. Uh, cold fusion generators up. These are very getting. These are these are creative uh, systems. I like it. Yes. And I will also give a one and a half up, and that's largely not because um, I like the game quite a bit, but I would want to play it very far apart each session from the other. Okay. Um, Fair enough. So and next year. So <laughs> yeah, like maybe once a year. Will wow. do me, you know. Still one and, and a half with just one player a year. That's not bad, though. Yeah, the game is oh, good. And when it hits the table, I like it. But once I've played it, I'm like, I'm good for a while, you know. And so I have to sort of make a comment on that. So that's for me one and a half electrified little dudes up. Electrified dudes. Power grid. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>